First thing I'm going to do today is tear the cylinder apart, take it off the crane. Now I've never done that on this gun before, and in order to loosen this up, uh, I think there's some Loctite in here. I had to heat this up uh, to get it to break free. The first thing you're going to want to do is unscrew this ejector rod head. Be careful, there's a spring in there. So take the, the head off, take the collar and the spring off. Now there's an internal ring in here that holds the cylinder in place. We're going to have to strike the face of the cylinder to get, get that to eject. I'm going to put a piece of paper back here. This is an index card to keep the cylinder from marring the frame. If you notice there's a little hole in here, move this ejector rod around a little bit and you'll see a little pin in there. You need to push that pin out. Alright, there's that little pin. And you're going to want to face this down as you pull out your punch or paper clip or whatever you use to pull that pin out. Because it's under spring tish, uh, tension. Pull the ejector rod out, it comes with a washer. Pull the spring out. Push the ejector out and the large spring out of the uh, center of the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and soak these parts in some Ed's Red cleaner for a while. Now to take apart the rest of the gun. Probably would have been easier to take that cylinder off if I'd taken the grips off first. Take the grip panels off. In order to get this main spring off, I need to pull the hammer back. And it won't let me do that being I already took the cylinder out. One way to get past that is to, to push on this pin in here or to grab the cylinder release and pull it backwards. I'm going to pull the hammer back. There's a little hole in this pin right here. I'm going to put the paper clip in there. Let the hammer off. And now that, uh, that spring and pin is captured. I'm going to take this back screw out. I don't have a block, so I'm just going to use this to drive a couple pins out. Now the grip frame will come right out of there. And there's those two pins. For deep cleaning, normally this is far enough, but I'm going to go ahead and take the trigger and the hammer out. And actually, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and take this crane out as well. That one screw and the whole crane comes out. Let me go ahead and unscrew and remove the hammer. and drive out this pin for the trigger. When you drive out this pin, leave the punch in there, because this does have a spring in it. You want to make sure you get a good grip on that spring before pulling this punch out. Just to make sure parts don't go flying. And then slowly ease that towards the back. So you've got the hand and the uh, transfer bar. There's a little bushing in the middle of this spring and the spring itself. 
I'm going to soak some of these parts in Ed red, Ed's Red as well. I have taken this latch apart before, and when I did, I lost a couple parts. I don't see a need to take it apart today, so we're just going to make sure that the uh, screw is tight. I'm going to check it occasionally. Now, except for the cylinder stop and the cylinder release, everything has been taken apart. And that's as far as we're going to go today. I'm going to get it all cleaned up, and then we'll put it all back together. All right, I've got the whole gun cleaned up, and I've got most of it oiled down. So now it's time to put it back together. We're going to start with the trigger assembly. First, we're going to take the spring. One end of the spring has a small uh, loop in it. We're going to put that towards the back uh, where the, uh, the sear is. Take the little bushing and put it through the center of the spring. All right, the transfer bar and the hand. All right, both those are going to face straight up. And this pointy end of this spring needs to stick out so we can catch the frame of the gun as we slide it in. Again, notice how the spring is in there? And this portion of the spring right here is going to need to catch on this right here as you install it. You may end up having to try this step a few times. Once you catch that spring on that edge, slide the trigger forward. All right, now that I've cut that spring, I need to keep tension on it. <clears throat> Lost it. I have the trigger in place. Now I'm going to put this punch in as a temporary pin to hold that in place. Do have spring tension. Back that punch out a little bit. Start the actual pin in. Alright, I finally got that pin in. I had to turn the camera off for a while. It was uh it was a little frustrating. The tolerance between this pin and the bushing inside is, is pretty tight. And Getting that pin to go in without losing the tension on that trigger uh, spring is challenging. Alright, since we don't have the cylinder in here to check function, I'm going to pull back on this. The hand is coming out. The transfer bar safety is coming up and the trigger is uh, returning. So I think we're good. Next, I'm going to put the crane back in. The crane is in. Let's put the hammer in now. Let's set that aside and put the cylinder back together. One of the best tools to put the cylinder back together is the ejector rod. We're going to put the little bushing on there, then the spring, put that down inside and line up the holes on the bushing and the ejector here. I'm going to grab the little keeper pin, line up the holes as we push it down the spring and the uh, little collar will go inside. I'll put that pin in. Enough to keep the collar. Pull the rod out. 
we pulled the rod out so that uh, that little pin is keeping that little collar and that little spring in there until we can put the rest of the cylinder back together. Now we'll put the washer on. The large spring. Put those in the front of the cylinder. Line that pin up with the hole. Use either tweezers or little pliers to finish pushing that keeper pin. Alright, that pin's back in. And now we need to push it just below flush. Now we'll install it back on the crane. You can see that little ring that, that keeps that on there. So we'll push it up to that point in the crane. Put that piece of paper back. And now we're going to strike this with the mallet to in, uh, reinstall that. Make sure you hit it right in the center. Um, so you don't risk bending the crane. Doesn't take much. Reinstall the sleeve, the spring, And the end cap will screw back on. Little function check opens, closes, rotates. Now that the cylinder is back in, let's put the grip frame back in. Go ahead and slide it into place. I'm going to put the screw in the back end. I'm going to tighten it down, not quite all the way. Pins in. And finish tightening that screw down. Before I put the main spring back in, I'm going to put a, uh, just a touch of grease on the, that ball there. To install this, if you have too much of this paper clip sticking out the other side, you might run into issues with the frame. But be careful backing it out. Uh, you go too far and you're going to be in a world of hurt. So uh, push this up towards the bottom of the hammer. Get that plate into place. Pull the hammer back. Make sure it's in the indent. Simple as that. Function check. Seems to be working just fine. Let's put the grips back on. Before I put the grips on, I want to make sure this is really well oiled and lubricated underneath where the grips are. Seems to be one of the areas that most collects uh, sweat and then corrodes. Alright, 
I finished rubbing it down real quick with uh, some oil. Well, there she is. Little Bulldog's ready to go back in the holster. She's cleaned inside and out. Functions in single action and in double action. I'm no gunsmith, but taking this fully apart and putting it all the way back together was a fairly easy process. If you got any questions, comments, or suggestions, feel free to put them below. Thanks for watching, and God bless.